Good morning, professor. Good morning, class. Today, I will be discussing with you about prenatal mercury exposure and cognitive performance during childhood. Here is a brief overview of what we will be going over today. I will start off by focusing on the introduction, objective of study, and the material methods. Then I will talk about the results and discussion of the study. I believe that most of you have heard about the adverse effect of mercury. The paper I decided was a paper published by multiple researchers at Harvard. The paper is published in 2017, so it is not a very new paper, but it is the paper with the largest cohort that studied prenatal mercury exposure to date. So what is mercury? It is an environmental contaminant that bioaccumulates as methylmercury in the food chain. It crosses the placenta and the blood-brain barrier and accumulates in the fetal tissue. It is introduced through coal-burning power plants, artisanal gold mining, and so much more industrial applications. Its level have tripled since the Industrial Revolution. Recent epidemiological studies have shown that prenatal exposure to mercury may be associated with lower cognitive test scores in children. Several studies have characterized DNA methylation in relative to environmental exposure, but not many studies have evaluated the persistence of DNA methylation into childhood. The following paper has three main objectives, including one, examine the association of prenatal mercury exposure with epigenome-wide DNA methylation in cord blood. Two, evaluate sex-specific differences in response to prenatal mercury exposure. And three, evaluate if the epigenetic modification persists in blood through early and mid-childhood. A total of 321 mother-child pairs were selected for the following cohort study. To assess the mercury levels, participants were asked to self-report on the consumption of fish. Blood samples were also obtained at the second trimester and analyzed using the direct mercury analyzer AD. Raw methylation image files are processed using the MinFeed package in R, and in case of batching, COMBAT is used to correct it. Two tests were used to evaluate the cognitive performance including PPVT and WRAVMA. Four statistical analyses were performed in the following study and it's listed below. The results of the paper are separated into five different subgroups and it's listed above. Early methylated regions are not identified in females, but for males it covered nine CG sites of chromosome 7 in the PON1 gene. The overall mean methylation levels were inversely associated with maternal mercury concentrations in the red blood cell. For every doubling in maternal red blood cell mercury concentration, a 0.3% increase in cord blood methylation was observed for one CG site in chromosome 18. One CG site in male was hypermethylated relative to maternal red blood cell mercury concentration. On the other hand, no site were found to be differentially methylated in cord blood for females. To evaluate the functional relevance of methylation changes, Researchers examined whether the DNA methylation of the PON1 gene at the differential methylated region and the CG sites were correlated with gene expression in the cord blood of an independent cohort, and they observed a moderate negative correlation. In males, mean methylation levels in cord blood for the PON1 DMR were marginally associated with cognitive PPVT scores measured in early childhood and no significant associations were observed for individual CG methylation levels of this region and WRA VMA cognitive test scores. Although prenatal mercury exposure was not associated with PON1 methylation in females, mean cord blood methylation levels of the PON1 DMR was associated with lower cognitive test scores for the PPVT in girls in early childhood, but not the WRA VMA test scores. To wrap up, DNA methylation changes of a genomic region of the PON1 gene is correlated to prenatal mercury exposure in males but not females, and it is an association that persisted during early and mid-childhood. Also, higher DNA methylation of PON1 is associated with lower cognitive test scores in early childhood for both male and female. To put it simply, the result of the study suggests that moderate mercury exposure during pregnancy can lead to sex-specific functional 
epigenetic alterations that persist throughout childhood and are associated with cognitive performances. The findings of the following study could possibly be explained with two studies. First, a study done in 2014 by Austin et al. reported that infants exposed to mercury has been attributed to genetic variation and subsequent enzyme activity of PON1. Second, a large prospective EPIDEM study done in 2013 showed that PON1 genotype can modify the association of prenatal methylmercury exposure and neural development, leading to stronger adverse effect in IQ deficits during childhood. From the following research paper, we would like to discuss some strengths and limitations. Let's start with the strengths. It is one of the largest cohort epigenome study of prenatal mercury exposure today. It provides useful information in understanding the effects of prenatal mercury exposure. It is also the only study to test for persistence of epigenetic modifications at two different time points. Second trimester maternal red blood cell mercury concentration is an unbiased biomarker. It provides insight on prenatal exposure during the critical developmental phase. Since no paper is perfect, we can always find some limitations of a study. The paper, as mentioned, is an observational study. Therefore, there are confounding variables that cannot be removed. Also, the study lacks information of mercury and other exposures during early and mid-childhood. Therefore, the contribution of postnatal exposure cannot be determined. Moreover, the absence of genotype made it impossible to explain whether the findings are due to genetics or not. It is important to evaluate whether prenatal mercury exposure target other genes. Also, the diverseness of the DNA methylation across different studies suggests that mercury's disruption might be time-sensitive during fetal development. Thus, it is important to find a biomarker that is time-specific to better understand the effect of mercury exposure. Yes, cohort studies take time and are very expensive, but to better understand the effects of mercury, it will be mandatory to increase the sample size and participants of various backgrounds. This would provide a better representation of the general population. Thank you for listening.